Good afternoon, beautiful people. Welcome back to another edition of Creative Nature with BKG. We're down here at Kenmore Marina checking some of the local oyster cages. in these oyster reefs. Get him in the sun there. Okay. There's some more flip flopping around in here as well. Uh, it's all bad. Oh. Got a sunfish right here. Send him on his way as well. And then we've got one, two, three, or five more gobies. And we'll get back into the water. And then here is a mud crab. Looks like a white claw mud crab right there. And here's a grass shrimp that said, don't forget about me. It's also in the mix here as well. Uh, there's another sunfish in the cage here. We're going to open up this cage and also check out the oysters and see what size they're at. Fun fact, which I think a lot of you already know is that an adult oyster in the three inch average size can filter up to 50 gallons of wet a day. So they're actually helping to filter and clear up the local waterways that they are in. One more, and then we should be able to get in there. Well, fourth one's the charm. Fifth one's the charm. Oh, here's another treat. Got a skillet fish right here, and he's suctioning down on there. See him with the sun. Got a nice big grass shrimp right there. We've got another goby there. Another mud crab there. Skillfish is awesome, and they uh, they are big suction that keeps them stuck to uh, oysters and rocks at the bottom of the river and bay. And this guy is stuck right now. Let's see if he wants to let go. And if I flip him upside down, you get a better look at that big suction that goes along the uh, bottom of that jawline back towards the gill fold. This grass shrimp's gonna take a swim again. Some more grass shrimp in here. And I saw another sunfish in here. So let's look at some of the spat on shell that's growing in here. So these larger oysters are just the half shell and then the live baby oysters that are known as spat are the ones that are growing on here. So some of them are alive. Some of them are just what we call boxes. They popped open. So you can see this one right here. It's kind of popped open. So uh, there's no oyster in there. If I peel that off, you can see that's an empty box there. But the ones that are closed up tight over here, you can see are still living. And they are ranging. Well, let's take a few measurements here and see what sizes we're working with. So on the smaller size, 
and we measure in millimeters because we use the metric unit when we are doing scientific data collection. Uh, so we have a smaller one here that is about one and three quarters centimeters. Yeah, I've got centimeters on that side. I don't have millimeters on this. And then we have a larger one over here. That larger one is about two and three quarter centimeters. So one and three quarter to two and three quarter. Um, anyone else in here? You want to identify yourselves? Let's see here. We're going to do a big dump here and onto the board and see what other critters we find and then wrap it up. And this also kind of uh, simulates what it looks like as they grow on the bottom of the Bayer River. Uh, oysters are these great architects when they're building these reefs all these nooks and crannies you see, just like Thomas's English muffins, attracts a crowd. So that's why you see all these critters that are living in this space in here, because it provides protection from larger predators. It's also a good place to lay their eggs. And you know, there's another one there, there's another mud crab right there, another mud crab there. We got um, one of those polychaete worms right here. Uh, looks a lot like a blood worm with its little bristly uh, sides, but these guys are common in oyster reefs as well. Yeah. And that is today's lesson. Shout out to Dunlogan Middle School's Oyster Gardening Club, and we'll see you next time with more creative nature.